Hey guys, welcome to my first UK drive on BMW's brand new M240i xDrive. I tried one of these out in Germany at the end of last year. And if you missed that video, there's a link to it up here. Today's video, well, I've got this car for less than two hours, so I'm literally gonna take it from here to a decent road and talk about what it's like on a typical UK road and in typical UK weather. I've actually purposely chosen this car which is the only black one out of all of the press cars there's a couple of the thunder night purples like the car i had out in germany and there's a couple of brooklyn grays which look really good i've never seen the new two series in black before um, but i think it really suits it it accentuates all the aggressive features it has this particular press car has the all important pro pack now, if you haven't seen the specking video that Tony and I shot a few weeks ago, check that out. There's a link up here and there'll be a link to both of my videos below in the description. One of the most important options we talk about in that video is the larger wheels on the front axle and that comes as part of that pro package. You see a normal M240i xDrive comes with 19 inch wheels all round like this one but the front wheels are actually quite narrow, so they run two to five section tires. This particular car has two four five section front tires, which makes them as wide as the front tires that are on my M2 competition. And also, more importantly to me, the standard M240i comes on Pirelli P0s, whereas if you go for the Pro Pack, you get the performance tire, that's BMW's words, not mine, and that consists of the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyre, which is my favourite all-round UK high-performance summer tyre that you can use for most of the winter as well. So make sure you do tick that pro package option. I believe it's about £1,700, but a lot of that will go towards the residuals at the end of your lease deal if you are leasing it. Um, you're going to get a better performing car. This is perhaps the most talked about and controversial styling angle to look at the new 2 Series Coupe. Unlike many modern BMWs, where we're talking about the front end or the grille in particular, it's the back end on the 2 Series Coupe that's been getting most of the press and most people talking online. But unlike other colours I've seen, with this black car, well, I think it looks really good. The 3D lights just fit. Everything looks quite proportional. So. If you want the rear end of your new 2 Series Coupe to look best, I reckon you need to get it in black. In terms of available models that BMW have on the configurator right now, so at launch, well, we've got the 220i, that's 35 grand. That comes with a two litre turbocharged four pot, 184 horsepower, 0 to 62, 7.5 seconds. We then got the 230i, which is 38 and a half grand. And that's rear wheel drive, just like the 220i. And that's 245 horsepower out of the same two litre four cylinder turbocharge. And that gives you a 0 to 62 time of 5.9 seconds. There's a 220D in there for good measure. I can't imagine that's gonna be around for too long, but that's gonna be your efficient car. And in fact, BMW claim that will do 60 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle. That's 190 horsepower and 0 to 62 in 6.9 seconds. And then you've got this flagship M240i xDrive. So this is the only one that uses BMW's xDrive setup, so four wheel drive. These start at 45,800 uh, pounds. And you've got the brilliant B58 underneath the bonnet. So it's a three liter inline six turbo. One of my absolute favorite engines. Um, produces 374 horsepower in this guise and 500 newton meters of torque. And that all goes through the very um, efficient and acclaimed ZF eight-speed gearbox. That gives it a claimed 0 to 62 figure of 4.3 seconds, but the car I tested out in beautiful, sunny Germany, well, I managed to get 3.8 seconds on my race box in that car. So surprise, surprise, it's quicker than BMW's claims. Let's jump inside because it really is starting to rain now and get it out on the road because I'm running out of time and we're running out of weather. It's a 
surprise, surprise, the weather has worsened. Today has been quite a stressful one, in fact. On these launches, you sometimes have two cars on the same day. Uh, the first one was a 2 Series Active Tourer. In fact, I shot a one-take video of that car, if you're interested in it. And that's over on my other YouTube channel, Joe Achilles Car Chatter. There's a link to that in the description below. Please head over and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. I'm gonna try and bring more raw content to that channel and more regularly as well. Anyway, we're back in this M240i X-Drive and we're on a typical UK road in typical UK weather as we talked about earlier on and it's getting dark. <laughs> Got about 20 minutes left of light. This car, well, it retails at 46 odd grand as we talked about on the outside and this one in particular is just over 50 I think it's about 51 so it has the technology pack it has the comfort pack and it has the all-important pro pack so pretty much got everything and I know 50 grand is a lot of money but that's just where the car world and the market is at the moment everything is expensive you can almost spend 50 grand on a Golf R when you look at the performance that's on offer in this car and the fact that it has BMW's brilliant and I would say now iconic B58 engine, I reckon it's worth every single penny, especially when you compare it to some other cars like Audi's new RS3, where a nicely specced RS3 is gonna be about 62 or 64 grand. I know that's an RS car and this is an M-Lite car, but actually in terms of performance, they're very similar. And we'll talk about that shortly. I'll compare the two in a minute when the traffic frees up and I put it into my sports individual um, button setting. This car, what's it like to live with? Well, in the 45 minutes I've driven over here on a selection of different roads, um, in comfort, these come standard with adaptive suspension, I believe. Uh, it's been very pleasant. It's, the ride's really good. Um, yeah, I can't complain. The ZF 8-speed auto just goes through the gears without you actually really noticing it's quiet in here. You don't hear much of that B58. Obviously, regulations have been getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Those of you that have got, let's say, the current M340i, if you purchased that in the past two years, you'll know what I'm talking about. They've really got quiet over those past two years. It's not BMW making poor exhaust systems. It's the way that regulations sit, you know, they need to be below a certain volume, especially on the outside, and then we all moan about the fake engine sounds we get in the cabin, so they've turned them down in this particular car. So you're left with something that's actually relatively quiet, even when you put it up into Sport or Sport Plus or Sport Individual. Um, but the flip side of that is it's a very pleasant place to sit and to be. When you combine the really easygoing ZF8 speed gearbox that has a lovely tall eighth cog, well, this would do 40 miles to the gallon on a long run on, you know, 60, 70 miles an hour, no problem. So it's an efficient and lovely place to be. It'd be a great daily. Very similar to the original M235i or M240i coupes. They were both really good dailies and they were great when you got them to one of your favorite roads and you put it in the right settings. And I think that's what this car has definitely replicated, but it's brought more to the party than just being a great daily. But yeah, before I got onto the performance side of things and how this feels when you start pushing it in this sort of weather, I just wanted to talk about the fact that, yeah, the ride quality, even on these performance tires, <laughs> these wider front tires, the ride quality is really good and it's definitely a lovely place to sit and be. These seats are nice and comfortable, this cabin's lovely. Whilst we're talking about the old 2 Series Coupe and this one, well, this car is actually 10 centimetres longer and five centimetres wider. It definitely feels bigger than that car on the road, but most importantly to me, it doesn't feel as big as my M3 on the road, which it's not, but it's not a massive difference between the two and this doesn't feel too big on a tight, twisty British B-Road, which is really important for 
a UK customer. Let's slow it down and put it into sport individual. So that's my configured mode, if you like. I've backed the suspension into comfort and I've backed the steering into comfort as well because this car, like so many modern BMWs, it doesn't have much steering feel. And I find when you're in sport, we lose even more of that steering feel. Put the gear stick over into sports automatic so I can see S2 and pull a paddle just to tell the car that I want it in manual. I've got all the traction control switched off just because I want to feel what it's like and see if it actually does move around a little bit. Um, the first time you put your foot down, I mean, there's just endless amounts of traction. There really is. And the first time you turn it in, just like I experienced in Germany, well, the front end is just awesome. You'd expect that because remember, this is on the current three and four series platform. It's not on the current one and let's say two series Grand Coupe platform, which is inherently a mini front wheel drive platform um, and nowhere near as stiff and sure footed as this particular platform. It just feels very BMW to me. And obviously when you're in sport, hopefully you can hear that straight six, which is being piped through the cabin a little bit, I believe. Um, but still, it sounds good. And I like what they've done with the fake sound in this particular car. So out of a junction here, it's very slippery. As you know, let's just floor it once this car goes past. Put on the floor. <laughs> so just like I experienced in Germany, it is rear wheel drive bias. So although it's an X drive um, setup and it's not an MX drive, it's set up very similar to an M340i or M440i where it sends most of the power and the torque to the rear axle uh, and therefore gives you that nice sort of slidey feeling if you like. It's a really interesting car. I am really enjoying it even on this awful day being rushed up against the clock. I have enjoyed my time in this car. Let's just do a little comparison to the current Audi RS3. Well, the RS3 is more expensive as we talked about, probably about 10 grand more spec to spec. It is more powerful and I think it's maybe a fraction quicker in a straight line, but very hard to say. The RS3 has a better ride, definitely, especially here in the UK where it matters. Yeah, whatever Audi have done to that suspension, that setup, I think it's really good. It's a nice fluid motion. Wouldn't say it's any softer than this. It's just a more expensive feeling suspension, but you would expect that on an RS product over an M light product. Um, in terms of interiors, well, I'd probably have to give it to the BMW, especially as it's cheaper. Um, I prefer the iDrive system. I think the interior just looks a bit more premium in here. As we know with the RS3, we can't get the sort of bling looking interior. We can only get the sort of standard one. So even when you have your Vorsprung RS3, you feel a little bit short in terms of interiors. Um, and in terms of driving dynamics, well, again, I think the RS3 has a little bit more steering feel and it feels dynamically a little bit more exciting, which is bizarre. <laughs> Saying that an Audi product is more exciting and has a bit more feel than a BMW product, well, that's something new for me, um, but I'd be lying if I said it was the other way around. But I've spent a lot of time in RS3. I covered, what, 2,000 miles in that one I had a few months ago. I haven't spent much time in this particular car. I had that one out of Germany for a couple of hours and I've had this one well, for about an hour and a half today. Um, so yeah, it's probably not a completely fair comparison, but I just think things like steering feel and stuff are definitely more in the Audi's favor as are the ride quality. Um, but in terms of like outright pace, yeah, I really don't think there's much in it. And in terms of interior and tech, the BMW for me definitely has it. And in terms of 
driving position. The other comparison we could talk about is comparing this to well, my BMW M2 competition. In fact, I've got a lot of people online on social media asking me um, about the two because I think a lot of people's PCPs are coming up on their M2 comps and they're looking at one of these. And I guess my conclusion would be that one of these is a nicer place to sit, it's more comfortable, it's a better daily than the M2 competition ever was but it is less engaging. It's not a full M car, number one. Doesn't have that DCT box or a manual option even. Oh, this is uh, pretty sketchy. And it just doesn't have the feel of my M2 competition. It doesn't feel as alive. Yes, the M2 is not dripping in steering feel, etc. but it certainly has more than this car. You feel more connected to the ground uh, in the M2, but probably on your typical A to B road. This is gonna be quicker now, especially in weather like this, you know, the X-Drive traction. You come out of a corner and you just put your foot down and off you go. It's just complete rocket ship, really. Uh, and I think that's what just gives this car so much potential ability. It is a mini, let's say, M4 competition X-Drive. And while we're on that note, we can compare it quickly to that car because although this particular press car fully loaded is 50 odd thousand pounds you got to remember that a base spec m4 <laughs> um, competition x drive is going to set you back 80 thousand pounds base spec that's before you tick any options so this is almost like a complete cut price version of one of those. Uh, 50 grand compared to, let's say, 90 grand uh, for a nicely specced M4 X Drive. So I think it does offer good value. It's a punchy car in the market at this price point. And um, yeah, I'm excited to spend more time in one. I've hopefully got a long term M240i X Drive coming to the channel maybe around May for a few months. Um, I'm gonna find my way back to Ham's Hall, which is where we started the day, uh, which is BMW UK's uh, engine plant. Well, in fact, they supply engines, three and four cylinder, um, to Mini and BMW. Um, really interesting place, actually. Amazing, amazing little tour we had this morning. Um, I couldn't shoot any footage or take any pictures, unfortunately but uh, it was impressive all the same. So thanks to the guys and girls that showed us around there. Until next time, <laughs> I am gonna sign off. Take it easy and thanks a lot for watching. Cheers guys.